Alright, hi year 11, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our fourth video on chemical bonding about ionic bonding. Okay, so we're going to learn about how things are in ionic substances and um, how their structure determines their properties. Okay, so what do we have here? So non-metals generally have a high electronegativity, which means they want uh, electrons. Okay, this is, means that when they are put near metals with low electronegativity, the and first ionization energy, they can take the electrons from the metals and form ionic compounds. Okay, so the idea is that electronegativity is the measure of how much a, a, an atom wants an electron. If you have ones that have high electronegativity near ones that have want low electronegativity, those elect, uh, electrons are going to transfer and then they're going to form um, ions. Okay, so so metals with, or other low electronegativity substances giving their electrons to high electronegativity non-metals. That's what it is. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, this creates positive ions, okay, positive ions from the things that give away their uh, electrons and negative ions, that things that receive electrons. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, here we have a metal, okay, and we see that it's uh, got a single electron on the outside. That electron's not held very strongly, so it's got a low first ionization energy, and it's likely to transfer across to this non-metal, which has seven electrons, and um, when it transfers across, it'll have its, uh, it'll be able to achieve its full p orbital, um, and therefore the non-metal will be happy, and the metal will be happy because it will have removed its last uh, outer energy level electron, and therefore be have a full p orbital below in the energy level below it. All right. So you can have the idea that the metal becomes an ion, becomes a positive charge one, and the non-metal becomes a negative one because it's got an extra electron, and those ele extra electrons are negatively charged. Okay, and we'll go through the idea of ion formation in the next video. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, this creates a positive ions from things that give away things, uh, electrons and negative ions. Uh, so what that then creates is this, an orderly lattice structure of interchanging positive and negative ions due to the electrostatic repulsion between light charges and electrostatic attraction between opposite charges. Okay, so here's that structure where you have positive ions over here and they are interchanging with the negative ions here. Okay, interchanging with the negative ions. So it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, that's the interchanging. Now, if you were to put two positives next to each other, they would repel each other. Okay, so they don't want to be near each other. But if you put a positive and a negative together, they're going to attract each other, which is going to be good. All right. So the idea is that it forms those uh, this lattice structure of interchanging so that each of them is attracted to uh, the ones nearby. All right. So these are attracted inwards and in every direction so that they are held in place. Okay. So they're all attracted to each other. Okay, so that's the structure there, and that's what you need to say about it. So, let's go to their properties. Ionic compounds are brittle. Okay, so they're brittle substances. What does that mean? That's the opposite of malleable. This is due when the ions are moved. A layer which moves will align with like-charged ions with each other, which will cause them to repel each other along the layer, which will break the substance apart. What the hell does that mean? Let's have a look. So here is that uh, ionic structure with the positives here and the negatives here. Everyone's happy. Everyone's being attracted uh, to their neighboring atoms. Okay, so what happens when you apply a force like um, this one here? What happens when you apply that force across and that one there? Okay, what happens is that that entire top row shifts. So if you remember what it looked like, that's exactly the same top row, but it's just shifted across by one ion. And when you do that, you make the like ions align, which means they line up against their um, same charge. What that will cause them to do is repel each other rather than attract each other. And then this entire layer, this entire layer splits apart from each other. Okay, because the like charges align and then they repel. Okay, so that's why they are brittle. They're not able to move uh, the atoms due to a force and still remain attracted to each other. All right. So electrical conductivity, they are insulators 
in solid form, which means they don't conduct electricity, okay? Uh, this is due to the lack of mobile charge particles, okay? So the ions are charged, but when they're in the solid lattice form, they are unable to move, which means they can't conduct electricity, okay? So effectively, it's in that lattice form. Those ions don't move, so therefore, there's no, there are charged particles. They're simply not mobile, okay? Um, however, in molten, which means that liquid form, or aqueous form, they do conduct electricity. Okay, so aqueous just means dissolved in water. So when in molten or aqueous form, the lattice is broken. So those ions are now free to move, and so they do. Okay, they can now act as mobile charge particles. So what happens is that, you know, when you've got uh, them dissolved in water, all of those ions can move into whatever direction they feel like. And so since they can all move around and about, Okay, they are now mobile and they are, they are charged, so therefore they're acting like mobile charged particles. Okay, so that's the idea behind uh, them being electrical conductors in aqueous and in molten form. Molten form, you just wouldn't have um, the water around. Okay, um, and then finally, melting and boiling points. Uh, they have very high melting and boiling points. Generally, they are higher than metals. Okay. Um, it's due to the strength of the electrostatic attraction between the ions, which is quite strong, but it can vary between ionic substances. So, for example, if I have uh, a one positive and a one negative, they're going to attract each other in a certain amount. But if I have a one neg, uh, if I have a two positive and a two negative, they're going to attract each other much more, okay, because they're doubly as charged. Okay, so they're doubly. Uh, positive and negative, and so therefore they're going to attract each other even more, and so therefore it's going to spend uh, require even more energy to separate those two to melt them. Okay, so remember you're always talking about the amount of energy required to separate them. All right, and that's it. That's it for ionic bonding. We're going to be going through ion formation and uh, ionic formulas and stuff as well after that. Adios.